Hi everyone, this is Pierrick from P2Design. In my latest animated project, I used a couple of impact frames to improve specific shots. It's a technique I used in previous projects, actually in most of my projects. So let's see how you can create your own. An impact frame is generally one single or very small group of frames with a very high contrast, designed to support an actual impact or an impactful moment. It can be a punch, an explosion, a gunshot, etc. They can vary a lot in design, colors and shapes, but there are a few simple rules you can follow to create successful impact frames. Once you get there, it's up to you to improve and experiment with your craft. I suggest you keep your impact frame range as short as possible, generally one or two frames. Because, like smears, it's something to feel, not to see. If we make it too long, it gets smoother, and we lose the expected instantaneity of the impact. Since it occurs, or is supposed to occur, instantly, we can freeze our animation at this specific moment. This is not a must, as you may want to design animated impact frames, but it's a good way to get started if you're new to this technique. The first rule to follow is eye contrast, both in values and between frames. To get nice impact frame, I suggest to paint or draw them, but we can get started directly in the Blender viewport using the Compositor. In the viewport shading option, you can enable it for the camera only or for whatever point of view. The easiest way to get a high contrast is to use black and white, and I suggest you do so until you get comfortable with the technique. So let's first turn everything into black and white and then use a label or a curve filter to push the contrast to get pure black and pure white. Now we have our high contrast in that specific frame, but what about contrast from one frame to another? See how I inverted the black and white features from one frame to another on this specific shot. It increases the contrast, hence the impact, even more. We can do that with a simple invert. Whatever the reason or the origin of the impact, you got to give your design a very strong directionality. In most cases, your impact originates from a single point, where the punch landed, where the sword cut, where the rocket exploded, etc. So we got to design our impact frame not only around this point, but also from it. As always, start simple. You can add details, or not, later on. In our example, we can use simple planes that will follow a single point perspective, that single point being the source of our impact. We can use both white or black planes, and if you're going for a couple of impact frames, then make sure these planes design change from one frame to another. Remember, contrast is the key. If you want to learn animation, rigging and much more in Blender, discover my extensive courses on p2designacademy.com. Learn actual professional techniques or enjoy all my exclusive free character rigs only on p2designacademy.com. It might sound a little fancy, but it's the right time for you to experiment and be crafty. We saw previously that we can get a satisfying result with a small effort, but we can get way further. I generally build my impact frames by hand so I would extract the actual frame with the impact and work from it in Photoshop or Animate. We could also make something directly in Blender with grease pencil, a black and a white stroke. I generally use a solid color and my hand gestures follow the directionality we talked about previously. I may draw big shapes as the plane we used to get started, and then I may redraw the main contrast on the frame using directional strokes. Another method is to use the finger tool or something similar to make the black and white bleed on each other. Just make sure we still recognize the main figures in your frame, but then it's all yours to play with. 
As always, if you like my content and these videos so far, please consider leaving a like, a nice comment and subscribing. In a lot of movies or anime, impact frames are also a time where the visual style changes. Using different textures or materials, so contrast is not only about rhythm, shapes and colors, you can trigger it with technique and materials. If you do a single frame impact frame, then you're pretty much ready to get started. But if you do it over multiple frames, then you must consider flow and how it will evolve. It becomes an animation. It doesn't mean you got to make your characters on screen move, but your impact frame may evolve in contrast and shape. If we take the example from my latest short, I used a couple of frames. One where I focused on the source of impact, the punch, and then the aftermath, the punch through the rock. While the overall directionality didn't change an inch, I emphasized different parts of the frame using bigger and stronger speed lines. On Koroshi, I used flow to transition from this sword strike to the logo getting cut. I used a couple of shapes that suggest a slice in one direction, then the other. Another way to create contrast. And on top of that, I added flashing frames. If you're working on an animation, you don't need to think about the impact frame at first. It can be added later on, whenever you feel like they would improve your work. If you don't have any animated material to practice with, just pick a short action sequence from a movie, for example, knock, knock. add it to your editing software, duplicate the frame of impact or shot or whatever, turn it into black and white, push the contrast and just draw on top. This one is definitely not the best I've ever done, but it was a cool 15 minute practice. Knock, knock. And the result is still pretty fun. There is a lot more to say about impact frame and 2D FX in general, but with this video you have a base to get started, and I'm sure you already have some shots from your favorite movie in head where you'd like to add some impact frame. So just get started, and I'll see you in the next video.